Hey everyone, this week I thought we'd talk about the Jeremy Corbyn spy story. Yes, I know that the US school shooting thing is possibly a bigger news story, but I try to keep these things light-hearted, and the gun control debate is about as light-hearted as a poem by Wilfred Owen. So, to quote the security services, let's talk about Jeremy Corbyn. Was he a spy? Or did he think that the novel, The Spy Who Came In From The Cold, was something about the winter fuel costs and an excuse to renationalise the gas industry? The basic story is that Corbyn allegedly met with a Czech spy named Jan Darmic three times in the late 1980s, including twice in the House of Commons. At that rate, the Czech spy probably had a better attendance record than some of the lazier MPs. Amidst the lack of supporting evidence, though, Corbyn also was very keen to point out that one of these supposed meetings in October 87 occurred when he couldn't possibly have been in the House of Commons because he was up in Chesterfield meeting with some British socialists. Best kind of socialists, they say, the homegrown artisanal British socialists, not that foreign muck, I jest, of course. Corbyn is, of course, an internationalist. Um, there were apparently other meetings in 1986, and to be honest, I'm frankly surprised he would have the time to be a paid Soviet informant. After all, there was his arch nemesis Thatcher to attack, and it was a year that his mother died. And he was also arrested that year, along with 15 other demonstrators, while they were protesting against the trial of a group of IRA members, including Patrick McGee, who was, of course, the Brighton bomber. It was also the year that Timothy Dalton started filming The Living Daylights, uh, which of course famously features a pre-title sequence set on the Rock of Gibraltar. And Corbyn and his friends have of course expressed questionable views on the Gibraltar sovereignty issue in the past. The thing is though, and this may come as a shock to some, but James Bond isn't real. You know, He's a fictional construct along with the Labour position on Brexit, and to an extent the Conservative Party's position on Brexit. Until someone shows some actual proper evidence to settle the issue, it's frankly just background noise, and in all honesty, if you're a Facebook journalist or a website editor, it'd probably be much more productive keeping the public aware of all the many other things that Jeremy Corbyn has actually been on the record doing. You know, hashtag just saying. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.